Judges chapter 16 and verse 26 and 27 says the following. Then Samson said to the lad, lad is a teenager or a young person, he said to the lad who held him by the hand, let me feel the pillars which support the temple so that I can lean on them. And the temple was full of men and women. All the lords, somebody say lords. All the lords of Philistines were there, about 3,000 men and women on the roof watching while Samson performed. Verse 29, and then Samson took hold of the two middle pillars which supported the temple and he braced himself against them, one on his right side and one on his left. And then verse 31, and his brothers, um, verse 30, I'm going to read the later part of the verse story. So that the dead that he killed at his death were more than all than he had killed in his life. Amen. I'm going to share with you today, usually I have three points, today I have ten. So, but I'm just going to quickly mention a few things and then um, I want to touch on the last few, few, few parts. I want to take Samson's story and just show how the anointing of the Holy Spirit worked through him. The first thing we see is that Samson was God's gift to a prayerless generation. Therefore, Samson was not embraced by the people he was sent to deliver. You will see in book of Judges, Israel committing sin. They finding themselves in trouble and then they cry out to God and God sends a deliverer. When it happened to Samson, you see themselves finding themselves in trouble. But we don't see a mention of them crying out to God. But God out of his mercy still sends them a deliverer except he was one of the only deliverers who was a lone ranger who wasn't supported by the people who he was sent to. I believe prayer is very important for us because prayer prepares us for what God prepares for us. Prayer positions us in the place where we can receive the breakthrough. Prayer is so important guys because prayer it opens the heavens portals for the kingdom of heaven to begin to come down on this earth. Prayer is earth giving heaven a license to interfere. We must understand heaven cannot legally operate on the earth because the earth was given to the sons of men. The way demons cannot operate on the earth because the earth was given to the sons of men. When a man gives demons a key called sin, demons operate on the earth angels and God's spirit cannot operate on the earth until men give God a license and that is called prayer. See that's why what happens on the earth is not a result of God, it's a result of you. It's a result of me. It's a result of the church. God didn't say if, if angels will come. He says if my people that are called by my name call on me, I'll come. But if they're gonna do nothing, he says, I can't come. And if they're gonna live in sin, demons will come. And when demons come and destroy things and then we blame it on God, God is not at fault if you never gave him the access. That's why night prayers are so important. That's why morning prayers are so important. That's why fasting is so important. So that in our city there will be an open heaven. So the people will be saved automatically. The people will be saved randomly. The people will be saved on buses, in schools, in Starbucks, in coffee shops. The people will be saved on the streets, in the churches, in Sunday school. Why? Because when we pray, we open the heavens up to come down to earth. We're a praying church. Somebody say amen. Church, this is the house of prayer. And this will be the house of salvation, house of miracles, and house of answered prayers. Satan cannot stop God from answering prayers. He will fight to stop us from praying them. He will put blankets around you in the morning to hold you back. He will invite you to the movie premiere watching at 11 o'clock so that you will stay up late and then you cannot wake up. On Friday night he will create something. He will do whatever he can just to keep you away from praying. Because if he can keep you away from praying, he can, God, he can keep the God away from acting. We see in Samson, Samson came to a prayerless generation. 
but we are going to be a prayerful generation and we will see God's deliverance in our city and through our city you know we just came from wonderful city of Bellevue last two days and a group of, of, of uh, that went out evangelizing and Ivan mentioned something to me he said Vlad he said when we go evangelizing in Troy cities he said I didn't realize how much grace is already in Troy cities he says over there he says it's completely different it's like there's there's like this wall that is there he says we go in Troy cities and he says yes we have some days but he's like in general Troy cities is a lot more open but see you have to understand it's been 17 years we've been praying it's been years other churches have been praying and we are going to continue to pray that in Tri cities literally people will drive to our city and feel better because God is going to do mighty things can somebody say amen the second thing that we see in Samson is that Samson was appointed by God and Samson was anointed by God he was appointed to be the judge and he was anointed to be the deliverer I want you to see that God's appointing always requires God's anointing. God's anointing is what God requires to fulfill the calling of God. You see many people in the Bible that God used to shake things up and you don't see God ever asking them to go to college. College is important. Bible knowledge is very important. Experience in ministry is important. Character traits are important. But all of that stuff is secondary compared to the anointing of God. And Samson was anointed by the Holy Spirit and therefore he was equipped to deal. See God did not need to anoint him if Philistines were physical problem. Philistines were not a physical problem. Philistines worshipped idols. Behind those idols were demons. And if Samson was to defeat Philistines, he didn't just need to have an army. He needed to feed the, defeat the spiritual forces behind them so that he can cripple their kingdom and bring freedom to the nation of Israel. Guys, if we are just dealing with sickness, we don't need anointing. I mean, yeah, we do need anointing to bring healing, but the anointing breaks the yoke that stands behind the sickness. Anointing breaks the yoke that stands behind the repeated divorce and constant accidents in the family. You need anointing to deal with spiritual forces that stand behind physical problems. Can I get any man in this house this morning? We need appointing and anointing. I want you to write down number three is that Samson went against the gates. And the church of Jesus Christ is called to prevail against the gates of hell. Means we are going to make the march. We are going to take the stand against them. This is not us hiding and hell is coming against us. I want you to see the picture. Gates did not attack Samson. Samson attacked them. The idea that God will build the church and the gates of hell will not prevail which means the church will be marching forward and the gates will stand in opposition and like Samson he ripped the gates up and left them on the mountain and pushed through the gates. The enemy wanted to, wanted to close, him, close him in but because of the anointing on his life he pushed through the gates. Jesus is building a church that every limitation in the cities God called us to to reach every gate that has been set there by witches, wizards, warlocks or just traditions or the mindset through the anointing of the Holy Spirit we can lift it, break it and push it through. Whether it's a gate of false religion that is dominating the minds of people. Whether it's a gate of heroin and crack that young people are sucked into. Whether it's a gate of sexual immorality. Whether it's a gate of just a religious resistance. Naturally you cannot lift that gate because demons are guarding it. But supernaturally the gate is no match for the powerful person of the Holy Ghost. Can I get an amen in this house this morning? We see Samson, not only he lifts the gates, but we see also Samson, he releases the foxes on the fields of Philistines. Samson releases the foxes. He catches foxes and which is also not that easy to catch them. And then he ties their tails together and, and on the back of their tails he puts a flame and he releases them. And they became literally a destruction. Every place the fox stood in, 
the fire came behind it and it started to burn the fields of the Philistines. This is how the anointing works not only just through the men and the women with color on the pulpit but God is wanting to use his anointing to put on people that everywhere they go anointing goes. Everywhere Nick went the anointing went in. The word of knowledge came in. Healing came in. Everywhere you go the anointing goes. I want you to see this. The day the foxes did not follow fire. Fire follow the fox. You can't wait and say Holy Spirit go before me because God said I am with you and he says where you go I give you. We're not in a time where we have to wait for God now. We are in a time where God is waiting for us. We have to take the step. We have to open our mouth and speak in Jesus name. So what we see right now like even what's happening you know we went with Ivan yesterday too and the day before to minister there you know the church has released us to minister. Our pastor, uh, the church has released me to go and minister in other places and everywhere I go, I don't go there to entertain people. I go there to mess things up. We go there to drop the bomb and see it explode. We go there literally not to just please the people. We're going so people get baptized in the Holy Spirit. The people get healed. The people get delivered. And so uh, uh, Ivan and I finished preaching on one of the services. Afterwards I handed over to Ivan to demonstrate the power of evangelism. He's explained about how power evangelism works and then just threw himself under the bus. Invited all the sick people on the front to demonstrate healing. And when he did I was like Jesus. <laughs> why did he is gonna do this and so and there's some serious sicknesses that came in and honestly by God's grace every single one except one guy with the pinky uh that was a little bit more stubborn one but including the kidney stone pain which was level eight pain started leaving one by one about seven to eight people experienced healing literally the whole group got charged up and they start going preaching on the streets and evangelizing because everywhere we go we bring fire I want to speak over our congregation today. Many of you here, you will be invited to preach in other places. And you are going to go there not just to preach a message. You will be used by the Holy Spirit to bring revival to that place in Jesus' name. Even, even this week, Pastor Sam and Lorena are going to go to Texas, if you can stand. They're going to go to Texas. Some of you know he had a church in Texas and they're going to minister there. And right now we're going to pray for them. That God is going to put fire that everywhere he steps in the devil's fields will be burned. Amen. Stretch your hands right now. Father in the name of Jesus we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you that you called the church God to release revival is God. Not to control people, not to limit people but to release people. I pray Father right now that you will put the flame in Sam and Lorena God. Every person they are going to pray for that they're going to see healings. They're going to see salvations. I pray God that this trip is going to bring the most fame to the name of Jesus Christ. We pray the demons will get nervous break down and they will leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your word flow through him God in Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. And we're gonna hear good reports. That's right. Come on somebody. We're gonna release, release people to do the impossible. Every place that we go. I want you to write down number five. Is Samson killed with the jawbone. Samson kill, killed with the bone that was from the mouthpiece of a, of a donkey. A particular bone. I want you to see a specific, uh, a very interesting correlation here. It's because this is the way the church and us, the early church and us conquer. We don't conquer with the sword, we conquer with the mouth. We cast out demons not with our fists, with our mouth. We heal not with our fists with our mouth. God sent his word and healed them. God created the world without getting out of his throne. He did it with his mouth. We declare God's gospel with our mouth. That's why people who say things like you know what preach the gospel if necessarily use words it's not scriptural. Bible tells us to preach. Bible tells us to heal. Bible tells us to speak to the mountain. Bible tells us to speak to the dry bones. Bible teaches us to use 
a jaw to use our mouth means we have to learn to open our mouth many healings do not happen not because God did not do anything because we didn't open our mouth and release the word be healed in Jesus name if we release our mouth and we tell the devil out in Jesus name Holy Spirit moves Holy Spirit waits for you to release your mouth the word of God God's word is as powerful in your mouth as it is in his it is the power of God's word and we must understand the way we conquer in our generation is not with the sword it's with the word the word has the power and you release it you have no idea how much power it has on people's lives just your words they carry they, they carry a vibration the words they carry power and the words they carry anointing of the Holy Spirit and that's how Samson operated with a jaw of a donkey I want you to write down the next thing is that Samson compromised and he lost his anointing I want you to see that this is also like a history of the church the church started to move mightily the early church and preaching the gospel everywhere the church was walking in the anointing the church was releasing disciples Philip Stephen and so many of these guys and then the church hit this time when when Constantine became the emperor and we know that when he was fighting the western emperor of, of Rome he had this vision and in this vision he he heard the voice he saw the inscribed in this sign you shall conquer he saw the flaming cross and so when he conquered he felt that this was Jesus coming to him and he used the cross as the emblem now of his faith and started to remove the persecution of not just Christians but every faith the problem with this is that while Christianity experienced relief, Christianity also faced its most difficult temptation yet, which was freedom. Because see, when you have a governor, when you have an emperor sponsoring the building of churches, when it's famous to become a Christian, many times dependence on the Holy Spirit weakens. Many times miracles are squeezed out deliverance are removed why because now it is popular to become a Christian now it pays good to be a bishop now it you become honorable by becoming a priest and this is what the Holy Spirit was slowly pushed to the side tradition came in and the church started to compromise this is where dark ages came in where people start using swords to convert to Christianity where people remove the Bibles and taught whatever came to their minds so they can make more money where stuff started to creep in in the church church still gets bad rap for what happened then baptism by immersion left the baptism of the Holy Spirit was pushed to the side the deliverance from demons that was disturbed and so many things was removed and the church experienced exactly what Samson experienced the church lost its commitment to integrity of God's word and the anointing of God started to fizzle out anytime you begin to compromise and look more like the world your anointing begins to fizzle out God called us to change the world not to conform to it you can't renew your mind if you don't conform if you first refuse to conform to the world we love the world God called us to love not run from the world to change the world but we cannot change the world if we're busy trying to impress it if the world doesn't love you remember it never loves its own that's just the first sign you're not part of that world you're part of a different kingdom and you didn't come here on earth to make a deal you came here on earth to make a difference you didn't come here on earth to try to impress you came here on earth to make an impact on this world we love the world but we don't try to fit in we don't try to fit in we want to stand out and make a difference for our God can somebody say amen and we see Samson because he compromised he lost the anointing I want you to see this picture Samson goes in circles and Samson was bound blind and went in circles you can add bald we love bald people this does not mean you lost the anointing some of you means you got the anointing but you see the Samson lost the anointing he goes in circles he's bound and he's blind these three things always circle together blind bound and going in circles when you see somebody not connected to God already you they'll always go in circles it's the same thing the same thing the same thing and you see them losing vision and you see them constantly being bound to some kind of a sense 
but this story always ends on a positive note is that while he was blind bound and going in circles the bible says and his hair started to grow yes he got the world's most expensive haircut but he didn't lose his head the head produces the hair Jesus is our head and if we stay connected to him even if we go in circles even if we found ourselves bound even if we found ourselves without purpose when you still show up at church there will be services and something will just quicken inside of you if you still show up to power evangelism you say but I feel stuck there will be one time something will snap and you will feel something is growing back if you still bring yourself to morning prayer or night prayer and you'll say but I'm going through the motions that is fine that is okay why because you don't know how and when the hair will grow back your ministry is not over your life is not over because you found yourself in bondage blindness and going in circles you have to drag yourself back to the same place where your hair can grow back where your passion can be restored where your ministry can be revived David says restore my soul oh God because when he lost everything he saw God's power not only to deliver but to restore every person here will experience what it's like to lose it and feel like you lost the passion you lost the edge but if you drag yourself back to the place where God is the head he is the Lord you will begin to feel the anointing flow again through your life you will feel the prophecy you will feel the healing you will feel the glory of God in Jesus name somebody say restore me Lord say revive me Lord in Jesus name and we see that when his hair started to grow back the Philistines they made a mistake of wanting to entertain him for him to entertain them they brought him in and the Bible says as they brought him in because he was blind they put a lad what is Josh Josh Pablo lad a lad grab my hand look at that it's okay the Bible says a lad took Samson who's blind who's been bound and who's been going in circles and the lad leads Samson to the pillars and he guides him I feel like this is what's happening with church right now last a hundred years God's been growing the anointing back in the church the revelation about baptism into full immersion he surfaced we don't have to pay for our sins that surfaced baptism of the Holy Spirit that revelation came back the priesthood of all believers came back the need for discipleship came back the power of the gifts of the Holy Spirit came back casting out of demons came back coming back and so and all of this stuff is beginning to come back and we are standing as a church and this our last of the last days and I believe the church that's been going through that has a bad rep the world makes fun of us mocks us and thinks we're a church joke something is building inside but I want you to see I want you to see the lad grab the hand of an old struggling but anointed judge and together they went to his greatest victory I genuinely believe in these last days God is gonna raise up young men I'm talking about the 12 year olds I'm talking about the 16 year olds if they can get introduced to pornography at the age of 11 and lose their virginity by the age of 14 they can start having visions and dreams at the age of 10 if they get a license at 16 they can get anointed at 16 they can preach at 16 they can cast out devils at 16 they can be raised by God at 16 See, I was just a lad, but see, my pastor, he took me by his hand at the age of 14. He didn't speak the language and he told me, you go to school and you learn the language. He said, we'll start the church and he said, you guys will lead it. And at the age of 16, I became the youth pastor. I had no college degree and I'm not saying that's the wisest thing to do. But I do know one thing that in the last days, it's not going to be old people. Hold on. Fighting the young people. 
It's not going to be young people fighting the older people. It's going to be two generations collaborating together. Church, it's time that parents and grandparents that we release the young people so that we don't have to pray them out of the pits they find themselves but that we pray that God use them in Sunday school God use them when they're children God use them when they are infants because this says the Lord in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters it doesn't say don't smoke weed get high and get pregnant it says the prophesy it means in the last days a young generation will grab the hold of the church and with the church together they will march to the pillars they will march into the mission that God has called them if you have a child today that's not serving God I want to tell you something God has a promise and his promise is that your child does not stop praying for salvation of your child I ask you to pray say God you need revivalists in the last days pick mine God I'm not asking just for his salvation I ask you God make the devil pay for what he did to him make the devil pay for how he tortured him hallelujah that's one of the reasons why what we're believing as a church we're believing for young people to be raised up hold on Pablo we're believing we're believing that's why on youth service you see young people preaching that's why you see them leading prayer they're not perfect guys nor, nor are you And we're not saying in any way that that people who are of age um, they don't have a place they do and stuff so but right now the God is really emphasizing to really raise them up and we come alongside provide the experience and wisdom and coaching to help them make less mistakes so that we shake the kingdom of God and bring down the kingdom of the devil can somebody say amen put your hands together for Pablo I'm bringing my message to an end with something that I believe is the most important. Samson, his last victory was different than any other victory. And I want you to see something. Because Samson had the greatest victory at the end of his life. But it's not the fact it was the end of his life. It's the fact that strategically, instead of attacking Philistine soldiers, he attacked Philistine generals instead of attacking the fields he shook the pillars he destroyed the foundation of philistine empire before he went of one person somebody threw him off or made him mad he went and took care of 30 people took their clothes and he did this little uh, vengeance you know uh, journeys and stuff but in this time God strategically through a help of a young man he finds two pillars and he says you know what I'm tired of just going for the Philistine soldiers 3,000 lords 3,000 generals these were army generals these were secretary of state these were these were the principalities of Philistines and he, they were making fun of him they were joking they thought he was a joke but see F Samson realized what they think how they make fun of me what do they say about me right now is indifferent and the Bible says he pushed on the pillars and the pillars shook the foundation was broken and the lords were destroyed anointing the greatest function of the anointing is not to fix the symptoms of the problem but it's to uproot the root of the problem it's to shake the foundations it's not just to win people to Christ it's to cripple and paralyze the kingdom of darkness in our city our city has lords in the invisible world our city has lords of false religion our city has the lords of heroin heroin is not just a drug there is spiritual principalities human trafficking is not just a human atrocity there are spiritual forces that benefit in harming people child pornography is spreading all of the even abortion there are spirits of death that are in high places and they occupy and they rule that stuff and we have to understand is the anointing breaks the yoke if we target the anointing on the field it'll work on the field but if we take the bazooka upstairs we can bring down the lords of Philistines and shake this world for Christ in your family Maybe there are lords that are evil spirits 
maybe there are curses these pillars that are holding all the problems you clean them you remove one problem another problem comes in and maybe you've been just praying God bring healing God bring restoration I want you to do something Samson did only at the end of his life stop fighting the symptoms and send the anointing to the root of the problem shake the pillars of generational curse of divorce poverty constant problems limitation constantly when it goes from one generation to another come to those pillars and don't just pray God bless me with the job say God I want the generational curses of these pillars in my family to crumble I'll find a job once they fall I'll get my body will recover on its own once that curse of disease because I get rid of one disease another one comes in I get rid of this one the other one comes in but once I break the pillar the Lord's will die on their own can somebody say amen I want us right now I want us right now in this room you can stand here today what we're about to do there's two kinds of people that are going to be in this room there is going to be the spectators and they're going to be the wall breakers and I ask you that you don't be the Philistine let's be the Samson you may be crippled emotionally you may be beaten you may be tired and you may not be there where you're supposed to be spiritually you may be like Samson you're a little bit disappointed with yourself but if there is one inch of hair still on your head God says use it if there is still a flickering flame inside of your soul God says release it if there is still word in your mouth in the name of Jesus send it out if there is still pillars in your life that are crippling and paralyzing you today is your day to experience liberty freedom and live a life Jesus died for